Hey everyone, welcome to Coffee with Joe for Wednesday, March 31st, 2010. Uh, it's been a bit of a hiatus since our last Coffee with Joe. Uh, life has intervened. My father passed away in the last couple of weeks and there have been some health issues going on. But we're back and we're ready to pick up this thread about rebutting the article on the Von Mises uh, website about the dangers of monetary reform. We talked about the constitutionality issue in the last video from a few weeks ago, and we have another um, reference we'd like to link to on our website to this article by Robert Nadels Nadelson uh, from the University of Montana from the Harvard Journal of Law and Public Policy, July 1st, 2008, in which he discusses the interpretation of the coinage clause in the Constitution. But today we want to move on to the discussion that uh, the uh, a public money creation system, a debt-free money creation system like the greenbacks that we advocate on economicstability.org would be inflationary. People just, whenever they hear this idea of public money creation, uh, yes, they argue about whether the continental currency, which was a public money creation system, a debt-free money creation system, system, people argue about whether that was inflationary or not, not worth a continental is what they bring up. Uh, there's research that indicates that a lot of the value of the continental currency was lost due to counterfeiting. People can argue back and forth these, uh, these old uh, questions depending on you know, which footnote they happen to be looking at, Joe. But right. a lot of people just seem to think that public money creation, debt-free money creation issued by the government, used to pay for some of its budget, would be inflationary by definition. How do you rebut that? I say, first of all, you have to get beyond the rhetoric, and you have to say what you mean by that. Um, and 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 so we have to say, what do we mean by inflation? You know, when you say when you say that, for instance, we've had a huge quantity of uh, money creation right now. A uh, you know, huge overexpansion of the money supply happened in the uh, during the uh, during during the you know, first, well, these first 10 years of this, of this, of this century. Um, you know, where's the inflation from that? Okay, where's the inflation from that? If, if, if there was, and if there was none, and there was, it was none, really. It, I mean, no extraordinary inflation, you know. If there was none, then why would there be? So you ha there's, somebody has to say, well, there would be a different source of inflation than the quantity of money that's created because it's the government that's creating it and not the uh, the banks that are creating it as now um, and that to me doesn't really make any sense because I guess you know I'm a, I'm a believer in Friedman's uh, uh, premise his own saying that you know inflation is is in all events uh, a monetary phenomena it's a phenomenon of the <coughs> quantity of money and if you take a look at, you know, the basic elements of our own history and our own uh, experience with both deflation and inflation, okay, that in the 20s, when the money supply increased by vast quantities and was used for speculation, did lead to inflation in, uh, in real prices. <clears throat> so, and then the contraction in the money supply, the deflation in the money. So you say to yourself, if if there is in fact a monetary cause and a monetary relationship, Pete, then you know what's the difference of whether the government creates it or not? Can anybody explain whether there's a difference between the government creating it or not? And I say so, there is so, no difference. So there's sort of two there's sort of two issues here. The one being is there something about the nature of debt free money creation? that is more inflationary than the nature of debt money creation as long as both systems are creating the same amount right. is one question. The second question is would it be harder to control the amount that's created if it was created debt free? The that's article right. argues that um, the government wouldn't be able to restrain itself from its uh, excuse me vote buying. Uh, it, would, it would issue too much money to buy votes. And there yeah. would be no way to restrain its uh, its over creation of its overuse of its money power. Yeah, two separate things. 
Two, it, it is two separate things. And moving on to that sep uh, that second thing, Pete. Thanks. The the, the fact of the matter is that uh, solving the monetary problem doesn't solve the political problems, you know, that are related to corruption or incompetence or you know failures of government. That that's something that we have to solve in tandem. But it's not solved, you know, by the mon solving the monetary problem. But the but the key, I think that really that Kaj lost and if you ask me uh, it was his main failure is to recognize in this the is, American Monetary Act this is the author of the article on Von right, Mises, right, Kaj Grusner. right his, fa his failure to acknowledge in the American Monetary Institute's reform proposals the 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 existence of the need for uh, the provision for the Federal Monetary Authority now Given that there is going to be a federal monetary authority and that that monetary authority is going to have the responsibility for determining what the correct amount of money in, in the money supply should be and, and uh, you know, basically set that amount uh, in a rational way based on, you know, whatever information is the key information to determine what the amount is, Pete. His failure to do that, you know, to me, meant that his review was, was more than incomplete or less than incomplete, depending on how you want to look at that. So the fact is that the, that the, monetary, uh, the American monetary Institute's provision for it, which is, which is criticism, was allows that there is a mechanism for ensuring that the amount of money that is created is the right amount of money and it is a responsible and an accountable uh, mechanism that is to say <laughs> you know you might not get it right the first time you know and if you don't you better get either a new method or a new people do using the methods or whatever but our ability to make sure that the right amount of money is created non-inflationary non-deflationary is included in the act okay and then it's our job then it's the citizens job Pete. you know we have to we have to recognize that the citizens have an ongoing obligation to manage the government and uh... and 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 so there is a continuing need for that yeah i i guess the way i'd say it is um one of the one of the obvious benefits of having a debt-free money creation system if we as we've said on this site before if we've been creating the money debt-free since 1960 there would be no national debt right now and so the price we have to pay for those benefits is we need to figure out how to run a system that doesn't create too much money that doesn't over create the money maybe that's never been done in history before successfully should that be the reason that we don't pursue this option? No. Yeah. I mean, I think we can do it better than it's ever been done in history. We can keep it in check in a way that it hasn't been done before. Nobody wants our our monetary system to fall apart. Nobody wants hyperinflation. We just need to figure out how to restrain that money power. But that we should completely give up the benefits of that money power because it's never been done before? That doesn't make sense to me, Joe. Right. I totally agree, Pete. I totally agree. Joe, I think there's more on this topic. We'll take it up at another time, but I think we're about it for now. Okay. We'll talk again soon. Okay, Pete. See ya. Ciao, buddy.